again. 92%. Yeah, well, 92, in, in, that's right, in Italy it feels 92%. Overwhelmingly uh, for Remain. But what did Mr. Corbyn do when it came to the final vote about triggering Article 50? He voted with Theresa May. <coughs> he voted with the Tories. Only four days before the Lancaster House, she'd given an indication what sort of Brexit it will be. And it will be a hard Brexit if she gets her way. <coughs> Which will be devastating for Oxford. When we've had big public meetings, we're in a situation where academics come along from the universities and say, look, 16% of our uh, research is actually funded by the European Union. 16% pulled away. A lot of our postgraduate students who we've been knocking on the doors and talking to are actually European Union postgraduate students. Again, uh, pulled away if they're not given uh, rights to remain or enter the country. If it's not free movement of people. He voted for uh, triggering Article 50. We believe that we cannot have a situation where we're not in the, the single market. The effects on the economy in this country will be uh, dramatic. Look here at BMW. There's a classic. They sent a letter before the referendum to all their workers saying, we think if it's a, a leave vote, it's, this is unviable. Now they've decided that the way they're going to work it is they will not build the E-mini in, uh, in Cowley. They'll actually build it in Hamburg. Um, now, I've got an electric car, and I'll tell you now, all electric cars uh, will be the, the norm in probably four or five years' time. That will mean that the, the uh, plant at Cowley is obsolete. And 7,300 jobs which are there will go. The heart of the industrial uh, essence of, uh, of Oxford will be grossly undermined if we're not in the single market. In this area, nationally, it's about 72% of our export trade goes to Europe, but it's much, much higher in the southeast of England. We don't have the exact figure for this area, but it will be a, a massive impact, a jolt, if they start to introduce tariff walls again. When I was a young man, first time I went to Europe was before we joined the European Union, and I had to have a health certificate, uh, <coughs> a, 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 my passport had to be stamped, one country still had uh, visas, it went, you know, it was a, a complete barrier. We don't want that, we want people to be able to move around and to free access, to come here and for us to go there. Very important. And of course, as soon as you have the rise of nationalism, you have the threats of war. We have Michael Howard, we we'll talk about something of the night about him. Uh, he was saying we should go to war about Gibraltar. That, that's nonsense. Uh, we could even get back into the Cod Wars, because if they have to try to have their zones again, we'll be back fighting the same fishermen's wars. All of that is the rise of nationalism. Nationalism rising in Europe is a very, very dangerous thing. Uh, we've had two world wars which are the currents of that. So, Brexit, we are the ones who did all the work, not the Liberal Democrats. When it comes out on the street, we were the ones down there on Broad Street, day after day after day talking to people. We are the ones going on knocking on doors about Brexit. We did the work, uh, and we are the ones who are clearly seen as the pro-Europeans. Clearly see. Strike one for us. One Oxford. Strike one for us. Against the cuts. Strike one for us. We're a movement. We're there. We're people actually coming together. Stronger and stronger. Over the last five years, our membership of the Green Party has trebled. And it's still growing again just now as we go on into the elections. We're getting stronger and our campaigns are becoming more sophisticated all the time. And I'm proud of that because we are becoming the authentic opposition. It's a great position to be in. These uh, elections, as I say, could be the last ones if they get their way of being democratic elections, but we can win them. We truly can win them. Let me introduce some of our candidates. Um, Newler, everybody knows Newler's going to say a few words in a few minutes. And we've got Apple. Rose Hill, and we've got Ben from University Parks. They'll be fighting. Oh, it's great. We've got other candidates who are actually from the city, but they're paper candidates in different parts of the county. You know, that's, that's great. 
They're doing their bit and they're giving people the chance in those areas, even though we won't win, probably. We are giving people the chance to vote green, which is very important. Because although we may win three, maybe even four seats coming this county election, we'll be in a situation where the vast bulk of green voting will actually be around the county. We now always only two of us, me and Sam there, we represent 17% of the electorate from 2013, the last vote that we had. And we can say that in the council chamber. There may be two of us, but we represent a hell of a slice of the electorate, and it's our voice that we're going to put forward. <coughs> With more councillors, we can, we can really fight and we can really be at home. Uh, and we will do that. I give you an absolute pledge. I know these people, and I think you will, you've got a real team here. If we, we are elected, we'll give them bloody hell. You watch what happens. <laughs>